in today's video I'm going to show how to represent and navigate through directed graphs in Python. So let's say we have a given directed graph like this one, right? So where A connects to B and A can connect to C, but because it's directed you don't have a, a connection from C to A, right? So A connects to B and connects to C, B connects to C, to D, and to E, and C connects only to D, for example. Well, the first question is, how do we represent this uh, in Python? One way is by a n by n two-dimensional array or matrix, right, where n is the number of nodes, and the ones that have a connection, you can put some information in the, in the cells where they intersect. But another way that um, it might be clearer, and it's natural in Python, could be to represent them like this. So, for example, we have we have the tree. Let's think about it. I would say A connects to B and C. Uh, B connects to C, D, and E. And uh, C connects to D. And that's it, right? That's my node. Well, if you start thinking about this, this, this looks a lot like it could be a dictionary where we have an element A with a list, B and C, a list of children nodes, right? A list of uh, child nodes, like this. And then here, right? So a list with only one element. And in Python, it is natural to represent trees like this. These are basic trees, by the way, but you can represent trees like this. So if we go here, we can try and represent the tree like that. So I can create a variable called my graph. Whoops. That indeed goes like that. It's a dictionary, curly braces. The letter A, the character A, is associated, right? So the key A is associated to the value B and C. That's a list. The key B is associated to C, D, and E, the three nodes that it represents. The key C is associated to node D. That exactly represents our tree as a dictionary. Now, let's create a little function that uh, it's called find path. And find path will take in a graph as a dictionary, a graph as a dictionary, a start node, an end node, and a path so far, which at the beginning is going to be just an empty list. So the first thing that we do is when we get the start, we want to keep track of which nodes we visited, okay? And that's going to be the path so far. So the first thing that we do is to make the start node part of the path so far, okay? Then we add a few termination conditions. Well, if we get to the uh, end of the tree, meaning the start node, this is going to be recursive. So if the start node is the same as the end node, well, I'm just going to return the path so far, which is basically the one node that I have. Now, you will see that the keys here represent nodes that actually have connections to other nodes, that go to other nodes. Those are called non-terminal nodes. So the keys of the dictionary, A, B, and C, are non-terminal nodes. Any other letter that doesn't have a key in the dictionary is a terminal node, meaning it has no connections coming out of it. For example, D. D would be a terminal node because there's no entry in the dictionary for D to go to further nodes. So we got to take care of that. So if the start, if the node that I pass a start is not in the graph, right? So if I start, I want to find a path from D to somewhere. Well, if D is not a key in my graph, then I just return no path, none, right? And the way that you check for keys in a dictionary is you say if the key not in dictionary or in dictionary, right? Depending on what you want to do. So to recap so far, we have two conditions. First one, if the start is the same as the end, just return, you know, what you have so far, which is basically a start. If the start is not in the graph, then you return none. And then what we're going to do now, the next case would be, well, so is the start is not the end and the start is in the graph. So let's say node A. Well, what I want to do is traverse these nodes to see if there's a viable path. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little for loop for each node in graph sub start. So I'm going to look for the key here and I'm going to get graph sub start, which would be the list associated to the value that comes in start. And for every node in this list, basically I'm going to call this function recursively, right? So for every node in this list, what I'm going to do is if the node is not in the path so far, so I have not encountered this node before, I'm going to create a new path that will have, that will call my function find path with the graph that I have, the dictionary, the node that I am visiting. In this case, say, for example, if I start from A, A expands to B and C, I'm going to call it with B, right? And the end node stays the same, and the path so far is what I have traversed so far. What this does is it's going to explore each node in this list. It's going to explore A, then it's going to explore B, and for B it's going to explore C, and for C it's going to explore D. Then it's going to explore C here. From C here it's going to explore D, right? So it's going to explore every possible path towards the end. Now, once it's done, remember, when it's exploring the last node, it's going to hit this condition. Because when we get, if we go from A to E, for example, to E here, it's going to go A, it's going to explore B. In B, it's going to explore C. C is going to be D, and D is not in the, is not in the graph, right? D is not in the graph. So that's going to return no, meaning there was no path. Then uh, D is not going to be in the graph, so this path A, B, C is not going to work. We're going to try A, B, D, right? Well, D is not in the graph, we're going to run into the same problem. And then I'm going to try A, B, E, right? And when I get to E, the start and the end of the iteration are going to be the same. So it's just going to return the path so far. So I need to put a little condition here. If the new path, uh, meaning the path that found, is not none, meaning it found a path to the end, I'm going to return that path. Otherwise, I'm just going to return no, none, okay? And that should actually be able to, uh, it's a good function, very simple to traverse a di directed graph. Now, let's try with some examples. So let's try to go from A to E. The way we call this function, I'm, I'm having a print here, but it's find path. You give it the dictionary where you have your graph representation, in this case, my graph. You give it a start node, A, and an end node, E, and a path so far, which is just an empty list for now. If we run this, if we uh, run this Python program, we'll see that it printed A, B, E, which is the path to go um, from A to E. We can see that in this graph. It did A, B, E. Now, what if I want to go, the, the thing though is that this is not optimized nor anything like that. So if I want to go, for example, to C, okay, because it does uh, depth first, it's, I, and it actually favors the first node here, right? If I want to go from A to C, it'll find A path, not the most optimal path, but it'll find A, B, C, okay? And if we look at the graph, A, B, C is a path, is not the shortest path. This does not find an optimal path. It just finds a path in a graph. And last time, lastly, uh, for example, we want to find a path from um, C to C to E. Well, we tried that. We tried that. So C to E. Let's see. C to E. And we try to run that, and we'll see that it returns none because there's no path. I hope this function, you find it useful, how to represent trees, uh, directed graphs in Python, and how to navigate them. This is very useful. Uh, mostly if you have a structure like a tree where it's directed and there's only one path to get to things, right? So um, I hope you like the video.